Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's first question. The molecule shown on the right is and you have to choose one of these answers. First of all, this molecule can be RNA or DNA and this part can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil if it is RNA or thymine if it is DNA. So this part is a base, this part is a sugar and this is phosphate group. When we read a name of the molecule, for example, purine ribonucleotide monophosphate, we move from the right part of this molecule to the left part, giving a name of this part, this and then this. As you see, each variant of the answer contains monophosphate because there is no question here, this group is called monophosphate. We can find here two groups, it's going to be diphosphate or three groups, then it's going to be triphosphate. In our case it is monophosphate, so these two groups would specify which answer we are going to choose. Today I am going to give you mnemonic technique, which is not scientific method, but will help you to memorize how to call this part of the uh, molecule. So it can be purine or pyrimidine and just memorize CUT, so C-U-T. And here C stands for the cytosine, U stands for the uracil and T stands for the zymine. And uracil and zymine is basically the same molecule, but in RNA we find uracil and DNA zymine. So all these three letters stand for the uh, short version of the base, which consists of one ring. So the base can be of the two kinds. It can consist of two rings or one ring. And this short version is cytosine, uracil and zymine. And this large version is going to be, take a look, cytosine base pair with guanine and zymine base pairs with adenine. And uracil also in messenger RNA, also base pair with adenine. So these two versions of the base, we do not call cut version and full version, but we call purine and pyrimidine. And what's interesting that short word purine stands for the long version and long word pyrimidine stands for the short version of this base. One more time, these three bases are pyrimidines and these two are Purines. They are larger version and short word purine stand for them. And this is pyrimidine and here the three bases which represent short version of the base. We call them pyrimidine. Now as you see the name of this molecule have to start with the word purine and we can cross out half of the answers. Now let's move to the second part of the name and to the second part of this molecule, this is sugar and this sugar is ribose. Let me show you carbons here which are not shown. So this is going to be carbon number one, this is carbon number two, this is carbon number three, number four and here is a carbon number five. It looks like this carbon number five is outside of this ring but actually it is a part of this ring. If this ribose is missing oxygen at the position number two, we call this deoxyribose. If it missing oxygen at position number three as well, we call this D deoxyribose. What we can see here is ribose and this is what we can find in the RNA or messenger RNA. So this is not a DNA because in DNA it's called Deoxyribose, oxygen at the position number two is missing here. And as you see, this is not deoxyribose, it is ribose, it is RNA molecule. And what if second oxygen is also going to be missing at the position number three? Is it going to be ribose, deoxyribose? Actually, this is going to be um, part of the molecule of the DNA, but we use such base when we do sequencing, because if oxygen is missing here 
and as you know messenger RNA or DNA grows from 3 prime and to 5 prime and then building of the uh, DNA or RNA strand is going to stop here. So such nucleotides only can be used in DNA sequencing and is not part of the normal DNA or RNA molecule. Now we can choose a name. So this is going to be purine. This is going to be ribose and monophosphate here. So purine, ribonucleotide, monophosphate, answer A. All the rest are going to be wrong variants. Now second question, if a piece of double-stranded DNA has guanine content of 26%, what proportion of thymine do you expect? In order to solve this problem, everything you have to know is just Chargaff's rule, which states that in double-stranded DNA we have a cytosine and it base pair with guanine and adenine base pair with thymine. Now it is very easy to solve this problem, just like 1 to 3. If we know that guanine content is 26%, so 26% guanine, that means that cytosine is also going to be 26%. And the rest, and this is going to be 26 plus 26 is going to be 52, and 100 minus 52 is going to be 48%. So let me put it here. These two bases uh, make 52% of the double-stranded DNA. That means that these two bases would make another 48%. And half would be adenine, 24%. And another half, 24%, is going to be thymine. And our question about what is the percent of the thymine we do expect. And the answer is going to be 24%. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.